Welcome back to a playthrough of Panzer Scenario 37, Delaying Action at Arnage. We pick up at turn 12, where in the prior turn, turn 11, uh, we've made significant progress, knocking out two um, French tanks occupying the uh, west or excuse me, east edge of uh, the town here. And subsequently rolling in our Panzers, uh, Panzer IIs and some of the um, Grenadiers in there as well, as well as surrounding the north side of the town um, and controlling most of, this, uh, most of this area over here. We do have some problems with the French moving up on our uh, left flank, trying to cut us off and provide some sort of uh, counterattack here in the center in the middle as well as we do have units blocking us from uh, getting off the road that we've got to discover and try to figure out how we're going to destroy them so with that we move on to turn uh, turn 12 um, set up the commands you'll notice is still heavily in them heavily influenced by moves and a few move fire marker or short halt markers on here as well as some fire markers so we're going to still be moving as much as we can and hopefully providing some more smoke to cover us as we come in here so let's see who goes first so the uh, German initiative roll it's going to be a plus 20 remember they need to get 50 or better uh, to get the initiative so they roll a 10 10 plus 20 is 30 so the French will fire first and um, move second so that means the Germans will fire second and move first. So looking at the French layout over here, we've got the units to our south that are looking to attack us here. So this first one we're taking a look at is uh, H35 105. That's this unit down here, right in here. And he is going to be looking to potentially fire at us and we're doing a command check on there and it is going to be a fire next we got to choose our target and it's going to be the nearest and the most dangerous or strongest um, looking at that we have several choices here and um, but that's going to be our target hex there it's actually several units in there um, looking at u20 u27 u4 as as um, Panzer 2C is the strongest unit, uh, but then we have targets of um, in other uh, other units here. So we're going to roll, do a roll off to see if uh, see which one's going to be hit. So we roll a six, which means it's going to target the Panzer 2C uh, 105 in the hex there. And we're going to look at that and see that we've got about a 25% chance of hitting it, uh, given its movement, given its size, uh, range, so forth. We roll a 1, so it is a hit on them. And now we'll check the location. Rolls a 1, which is turret front. And comparing the penetration versus the armor, it's 4 to 4. So we're going to have a variable penetration roll. Roll a 3, which is a minus 1 and an eight, which is a plus one. Uh, that's the variable penetration chart uh, over here. Don't know if people have used that, but it's this over here where we all are eight and a three. And you see there's a plus minus of one, the three being the minus, the eight being the uh, plus, so nets out to be zero. So it still penetrates. So we roll for damage. Damage is a two, no damage, but we do need to check for bailout. 10 or less, rolls a 66. So took a hit, but didn't they didn't uh, get damaged and they didn't bail out, so they stayed with the tank. So that's good. We lucked out on that because we can't afford any losses going forward with this because uh, we've already taken quite a bit of losses. I think I've shown the damage already or the kill already. We've lost... Uh, um, two, three pants, fours, and a reconnaissance unit. That's been our heavy damage plus a forward observer and a half track, uh, where we've knocked out um, an S35 
uh, two F-35s and four H-35s and a couple of AT guns. So we're really just kind of matching up with what uh, they've been uh, knocking out on our side. So we've really got to start knocking out some more, as well as getting units off the board. So continuing on here, uh, checking this one, which is an S-35, and they're going to do command check. They roll a four. Uh, that's actually going to get a move command on them. So they're not going to fire. They're actually going to move, which could be interesting. So we go over to the other um, S-35. That's this one over here, right here. And I'm going to zoom in here just a fraction, just to give you a little bit more view. There we go. And uh, so they roll a 69. That's going to be a fire command. And... Um, they're going to check for a target. It's probably going to be dangerous, most dangerous, and nearest. And now we uh, look to figure out which one it's going to be. And again, we're looking at our uh, units up there that uh, we fired on before. So he's going to fire on the... Uh, Panzer three, uh, where is it here? 303, that's this guy up here. Right. So he's gonna take a shot on him. He's at a range of seven, 35% chance of hitting. Rolls an 87, so that's a miss. So now moving along, we'll check our CA-47. And they roll a four, which means they're going to move as well. Okay, so and the truck is going to be moving as well if they survive. So looking at the German fire. So Germans are going to look to fire uh, first off some smoke. The uh, command uh, Panzer IV is going to fire smoke into there. They roll a two. That's a success. So we'll get a smoke marker in there. He, uh, the H30, or excuse me, the SPW 251 um, 2 is going to try to fire. Uh, oh, excuse me, sorry, the 303, Panzer IV 303, is going to try to fire over here. These will eventually fire smoke, but uh, getting a little ahead of myself. They're going to fire on the truck, try to knock them out. Get some cheap points there. So it's going to be a GP shot, effective greater than 78, um, and suppress them between 47, 49 and 77. Roll an 86, that's an effective. So they actually destroy the truck. It actually um, does a BU check, and it's actually knocked out. So we've knocked out that truck. That gives us a handful, a small amount of points. I think it's six points or something like that, but we'll take anything at this point to keep us going okay and now um, checking for the Panzer 4D 301 um, firing at the uh, H35 in the woods it's a long range shot very low odds 6% chance of hitting roll a 12 Ooh, close but not quite there and that's miss and now the 302, Panzer IV D 302, fires smoke into uh, that hex. Roll a zero, it's a miss or fail. And now we'll jump over to the uh, SPW 251s, uh, firing smoke into uh, 28 and 2. Roll a four, it's a success. So we're going to get smoke into there. And then the second one, <coughs> excuse me, firing a 27T4, rolls one, that's a success. So we get smoke in over there. All right, trying to give us a little bit of smoke screen going forward here. So now it's a German move, um, no close combat or hand to hand, so it's going to go right into the movement for the 
the Germans. And you can see I'm moving some of the infantry down, trying to screen them and try to keep the uh, S-35 and the AT guns occupied down here. Hopefully knock out the AT guns, given the small arms can um, kill the crews. And the S-35, hopefully just keep it occupied so it doesn't roam closer to uh, our moving tanks and um, half-tracks. So let's see here. So I've got some movement over here. The command unit is going to dismount. That's my reshuffling here. And there we go. Just getting them right. And the half track is actually going to move up out of the way so it doesn't become a casualty for, from something. And then up here, we've got another half track that's moving. Uh, doing a bog check, it passes. So it should be able to move up over there. And then we're dismounting our heavy machine guns in the town. Again, providing some sort of break or some sort of occupation to keep the, uh, keep the French occupied while we move around. Eventually we'll have to get those units out of there, but hopefully we can create enough of a block uh, with them that uh, tanks don't cause too much problems. So then we got some more movement of trucks, just getting them out of the way and not letting them becoming casualties. A little bit of uh, uh, force security here. Uh, checking some ranges, lines of sight, basically. Because uh, somebody did note in the comment, and will comments uh, prior, that uh, the uh, line of sight marker on this usually off by one hex or so so I've been double checking these these ranges but this is just some sightings here over here so got to watch the uh, the ranges over there particularly when I'm calculating the uh, firing so continuing on with the movement a few more SPWs moving up uh, some more infantry moving and SPWs moving into town again taking advantage of road movement to get them up into the town and really occupy that town really want to get units in there for the safety of uh, safety of those vulnerable units again a little bit more movement coming along uh, bog check here for this recon unit that's in the um, gully he's going to try to move out of the gully and he succeeds he's going to move up into the town you can do that so he's up there and a few more range checks, just looking for any type of visibility changes for both myself or the French. A few more movements. Now I'm up here, I'm moving the recon unit. Um, this is kind of an afterthought uh, as I saw these two units up here. Um, you know, I want to try to advance down the road like this. I think I showed you before. Um, come down the road and then get them off, off this way. Because you know road movement is much quicker over here. But if you noticed, the um, the uh, there's plenty of units still blocking us over here. We've got all these units here, and there's more over here, and even one down here that has some nice shots on us coming down the road. So I'm not sure if I'm going to tangle with that. So what I noticed over here was the fact that. This whole area over here gives me a nice, safe area behind the town and giving these hedges, uh, which block line of sight across here, that I can maneuver around up here and potentially using you know, cross-country movement, get around over here and then get an avenue potentially to move off the board up on this corner here as well. So it's giving me another option that's kind of developed. So what I'm doing over here as I move along, moving up the... Um, recon unit and then I'm also going to move up this uh, Panzer IV D as well and they're going to provide up here and I'm hopeful that I can get them up here lay down some smoke drive them in and uh, spot this unit hopefully this unit um, maybe even this unit this one's going to be tough but if I can spot at least these guys and see if they're real or fake uh, without taking fire and getting destroyed, 
I can open up this avenue even more up here and give me an option. So that's something I'm going to try to do, as well as try to push the center here. Um, got to try multiple angles to get these guys off the board, because it's getting late. We're up to turn 12, and I've only got, uh, let's see, five more turns, yeah, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, to get some points for getting them off the board. And um, I want to try to get them in position to get some points by getting off the board. So again, now looking back here, I'm, I'm moving up some of the uh, um, some of the trailing units, I'm trying to get them closer uh, into town as much as possible. So Panzer IV Ds move up. D double checking my uh, ranges on stuff, and yeah, I'm kind of moving forward this way. So I'm um, doing a bog check on the Panzer IV D, the command bog check, Panzer IV D. He's okay, so he moves out. And I think, uh, yeah, checking some more ranges here, come on. I think the other command unit, he failed his uh, bog check back there before. I missed showing you that, but he's, he's stuck in that scrub for the moment. So now it comes to the French move. Um, so let me just scroll you down here a little bit. So the French movement, first off, the truck is going to advance down the road, or excuse me, down the path, and behind the woods there. That'll get him out of harm's way for, for now at least. Next, uh, coming to our S35, He's moving this way, kind of moving up on our flank. And now I think he gets into a very good firing position at this point. He's got a good angle on all of this terrain up here. So in theory, he's going to be able to shoot like this and like this um, on our units uh, coming across there. So he can hit anything crossing um, these roads. So he's in a good, good firing position on there um, with that. So uh, coming to next is going to be the uh, AT gun. He actually moves over there into the brush. Sorry, he's just off the board right here into the brush. And there's no second air phase. So we go to the adjustment phase and any pivoting. He pivots. No, he doesn't pivot, actually. He stays where he's is now turrets um, scroll up here a little bit because there's plenty of turret movement i've done over here you'll see the number of units that pan that recon unit and these panzer twos um, are also going to get some turrets and then uh oops there we go to the end and then we're moving some suppression there was one suppressed uh unit over here which i think removed and then the smoke uh, flipped over. That's three smoke markers flipped over. And that brings us to the end of turn 12. So not a lot of action. We only knocked out a truck, uh, which is not significant, but it is a few points. More positioning, more movement, trying to get these guys forward as much as possible to get them off the board. And the French kind of did the same thing. They did have some shots, uh, but were missing. Um, they do have one S35, which now I think is in a very good position to cause some problems for us up here in the town, um, as well as the anti-tank gun and the uh, S35 back here and being in a position to, to do some do some damage. And again, as I said, my strategy is going to be twofold. Uh, try to open up this uh, angle here to the north by pushing through and trying to discover what these guys are here and here and possibly here as well as push down the road um, to see if we can't get up the uh, up the uh, oh, there we go up the road and discover these guys and potentially you know have some smoke to cover us here as well but this could be tough because we do have a flank we do have these uh, French tanks flanking us um, over here and having some very good angles uh, on us coming forward. 
So, again, the playthrough uh, is going well. We're about at our halfway point with turn 12. It's 23 turns, but it's going to be variable at the end. Um, I think I mentioned that before or not, but here I'll just show it to you. So right on turn 18, we'll um, <coughs> start rolling a single um, D10 dice. And, you know, one on turn 18, a one will end the game right there. Um, which means that whatever the score is at that point is going to be the winner or loser. Um, starting on turn 19, it's going to be one or two. Um, starting on turn 20, it's going to be one, two, or three. 21, four, five, uh, one, through five, one through four. And then 22, which I believe is the ending turn, the real ending turn of the scenario, uh, it'll be all the way up to six. And then we may get on to turn 23 and turn 24. We'll see. Those are going to be extra ones. That would be nice in case we're, we're running short. But you can see we're right about at our halfway point, a little, maybe a little bit beyond. Um, and I think, you know, movement-wise, we are halfway across the board. We're certainly halfway, if not three-quarters of the way, um, across the board. But we've still got a long way to go to, you know, avoid these tanks, discover these potential hidden units, and get our avenue to exit off the board and um, claim some victory points or at least take away victory points because that's the other thing the, right now the uh, french have victory points for not allowing us off the board and uh if we get nine nine units or more off the board uh, we can take those points away from them and that would be a serious impact um, to them as well so there is good chances that we'll win, but it's still up in the air for it, which is uh, perfect and what I was looking for. So hopefully you're enjoying this. Um, we will be back with turn 13 um, on the next video. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.